Hey, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. I got a work day planned. Let's go shred some stuff up. All right, today we're going to do some shredding. I'm going to test a new product that I bought to accomplish some goals around my garden. Um, so, got a little work day planned. But first, I'm hungry. Let's go eat. This is good. I get to eat an orange off my tree every day. Breakfast, lunch, brunch, whatever. Just come out and pluck it off the tree. It's citrus season and I feel very blessed to have these uh, satsumas. This is the Owari satsuma and it's been growing in a pot for a couple years now. And I bought it a couple years ago. It was um, just a little whip, about uh, two and a half, three feet tall. and yeah, got a lot of oranges this year. I love it. If you can grow citrus, it's one of the most rewarding things there are. And um, yeah, you don't have to live in a tropical or subtropical area. You can grow citrus um, in a pot. And when it gets too cold, if you live in zone maybe eight or seven, you probably get away with citrus in that area. Just bring those pots in and um, when it's cold and frosty and give them some sun, put them near a window and uh, perhaps they'll do good for you. Doesn't hurt to try. In a previous video, I talked about all of this Malabar spinach vine that I pulled out of my compost because it began growing in there. And if you chop this stuff up into bits like this, it still sprouts. Even the smallest little bit of this has the potential to sprout. So I pulled it all out of there and I needed a way to shred this stuff and render it um, inert so it would rot in my compost. This is a lot of good green mass. And I told you in that video I was going to get a shredder. Well, here's my shredder. Uh, this shredder makes short work of these soft vines. But I've also needed a shredder for uh, other reasons as well, um, especially to help my compost get active and get, uh, get brewing, man. I need compost in my garden. Um, I need it to be able to handle small woody twigs and, and, and grapevines. Grapevines are woody, uh, but they're small, and so I don't need a giant wood chipper. Um, I can't afford a giant wood chipper. I can't justify a giant wood chipper because I don't have giant wood logs and, and limbs and stuff very often. And when I do, well, those usually get used in hugel culture. But I do have lots of woody stems and woody twigs and occasionally, you know, small woody things off the oak tree out front. Uh, clippings from my trees when I do pruning, um, woody plants like eggplant when they get big, like okra stems. Uh, I'd like to be able to chip those up, and this little cheap uh, electric shredder uh, should be able to handle those. So I'm going to put it through some tests today and shred up all this stuff. This, this shreds real easy. I've already tried it. Um, and I'm going to also try some grapevines and see how it reduces that down to wood chips. And uh, this, this should be a good thing. I'm not endorsing this product. This is a cheap Chinese electric shredder. It's just a shredder. It doesn't do big limbs and stuff. Um, you're not going to be able to put an inch thick uh, piece of oak in there and get any success. But if you have a small garden context like I have, and the things you need to shred up are generally small things, annuals or grapevines or small limbs and twigs, um, this ought to do the job, but we'll have to see over time. It's a basic electric shredder. You get your paddle in here and your stuff goes in there. This is the, the largest diameter of branch they say you could put in here. Um, I don't think that's gonna really work with anything wooden. But you know, like annual stems that are that big, it'll probably chew it up. But you just put stuff in here and shove it down and it sprays it out into your container of choice. And that's what you get. 
pretty well shredded. Real simple on and off switch here. And you got a breaker if you overload your, your blades in here. Uh, it'll trip this breaker to keep you from burning the engine out. And after about 10 seconds, you push that and reset it. So, yeah, real uh, real cheap feeling, kind of. But uh, and, and the instructions for assembly were terrible, but we figured it out. All right, enough talk. Let's get to shredding. nice stuff. This Malabar spinach should probably not have any opportunity to sprout again. So we'll just dump this right in. There we go. And it is a fairly succulent plant, meaning that there's water in there already, so I don't have to really water it in. I'm just going to put a layer over all my paper shreddings down in here. I have some bigger stuff. This is hard, old prunings off of my grapevine. We're gonna see how it handles these, uh, these harder, this harder wood. Now, obviously, this is a slow way of chipping. If you really had to chip a lot of material, one of those larger, more expensive uh, wood shredders or wood chippers would be in order. But so what we have here is just our, our prunings and our garden refuse. Yeah, this is pretty good. Chop me some canna also. That, that machete's so dull. There we go, that ought to be enough. It's alright, it works. Yeah, that stuff's pretty soft. Get a good swing at it, man. All right, let's let's put some of those through. That's good green matter too. All right, I'm gonna try some larger oak limbs. If it's gonna jam up, this is where it's gonna jam up. We're gonna run some canna lilies through it as well. So, crank that thing up. Let's see if this can handle. one-inch, very old, very dry oak limb. That's about as much as I think it can handle. But uh, it did a good job chipping up the hard stuff. They say after you run this wet green stuff through it, you ought to run some dry material through it to kind of clean the blades out uh, for storage because you don't want to leave all that moisture in there. So uh, dry limbs like this are perfect. 
uh, we discovered, as you saw, that they do tend to whip around when the blades get them. So uh, wear your safety glasses. Uh, don't be like us. And uh, <laughs> we don't got none. <laughs> but uh, I'd call this a success, and I'm I'm pretty happy with what we have here. Well, that's satisfying for sure. We discovered with the canna lilies that leafy material doesn't chop up that well, although it does shred it up pretty good. I don't think any of this canna lily down in here is intact enough to reroot itself, and it's notorious for that. So that's why um, I'm testing shredding up the canna lily as well as all this Malabar spinach. Clearly, the, uh, the wood chips made from the oak limbs and the grape vines. Uh, Good stuff right there. So this will go into the compost pile as well. Like I said before, I think you could probably make mulch for your garden, a real nice mulch here. If you had the time to sit around and grind through a one inch hole, I don't think anybody's got time for that. If you're gonna make uh, wood chips for mulch, that'd be best to invest in a true chipper. But uh, the only downside is you can only do a little bit at a time through this little hole right here. And, um, you know, that's, that's your bottleneck, quite literally, and you can only get a little bit in there. And, uh, but, you know, that keeps you from overloading this uh, electric motor. So, for what it is, I'm pleased with it. Yeah. Again, this machine is not designed for high volume. It's just a kind of a garden help. And uh, while I'm pleased with it, the question is going to be, does it last? The one I had before didn't last. And I burned it up pretty quick, but it was used. It was old. Uh, this one's brand new. We'll see. All right, let's dump this in the compost. This is the kind of material that will be ideal for that shredder. All of these woody vines on my grapevines, when I prune them back, you know, I cut them all the way back quite severely. So all that biomass, it doesn't look like a lot, but when you gather it together, you get a pretty good pile of wood. So all of that will be shredded. And that's good carbon because these will be dormant and dry. It's good carbon for the garden. Likewise, prunings from my fig trees, uh, prunings that won't be made into cuttings, will be ideal for this chipper shredder thing. So we look forward to that as well. Whole woody pepper plants like this three-year-old veteran that's now finally dying are perfect for that shredder. This whole thing can go through that shredder and be added to the garden. Don't waste anything. Don't throw stuff out. If you're trying to decide if one of these shredders is for you, um, if you're a professional homeowner, like Wrangler Star says on his channel, if you're a professional homeowner like, like me, you probably have hedges like this. This is the perfect material to send through that shredder. It's got a kind of a woody stem. And uh, when you trim up your hedges, just collect all this stuff up, take it to your shredder, and it becomes instant compost. And these hedges need a trim for sure. So I'll gather some of this stuff up and we'll go run that through the shredder as well. See if it handles these leaves. All right, so the leafy hedge goes through just fine. You saw it kind of sucked it down in there, but uh, it doesn't shred the leaves up very well, but it does, it does chop them a little bit, but they're pretty coarse. But uh, for compost, that's all you need. That's, uh, that's not bad. That's great compost material right there. Now we have our compost nicely shredded. Uh, we've mixed it in with shredded paper, that's carbon. All of this is moist in here. We should see our compost start to kick off in a couple of days and heat up into that green zone. I'm expecting about midway into that green zone because we don't have a lot of volume yet. But as we add to this compost with all this chipped material, yeah, that should be really good. Really good hot burn compost. Yeah, so hey, thanks for joining me and Sam on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. If you like our content, I invite you to subscribe. Uh, please follow us on Instagram and on uh, uh, Facebook. And if you're looking for seeds for the spring, follow my link below to Seeds for Generation, a, a great family-run business. And if you use my link, you'll be supporting this channel a little bit because I make a little bit of a commission. And I vouch for their seeds. Uh, a lot of what's in my garden now 
came from Seeds from Generations, and uh, I'm pleased. So, hey, y'all have happy gardening, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.